the theme tonight is budget gadgets for astronomy and that seems quite fitting with prices going up with food electricity gas everything cost of living is going up so i don't really want to discuss expensive things that we need to buy but you still have to treat yourself sometimes so i've put together 15 of my top picks for gadgets for astronomy which i think are really useful A number of these things I use personally now or have done in the past and the ones that I don't personally use I know from word of mouth get really good reviews and get really good reviews left on the First Light Optics site. So let's just jump straight in now and as you can see the first one we're looking at is a head torch and this is a dual white light red light head torch and I use one of these, you may have seen me use this in, these in my videos and it basically just frees up both your hands and means that once you popped it on your head wherever you point your head is illuminated and um, yeah it's just so much just easier than using a torch that you're holding in your hand that's taken up one hand and that you've got to coordinate with what your eyes are doing so yeah uh, that was one of my good investments a head torch so moving on to number two these are in no particular order whatsoever so next we have this little adapter that i personally use in my observatory and this converts a 50 mil finder scope into a guide scope so you can attach your camera directly to it via the m42 thread in this case but there's also a version for the mini cameras with the c thread which is like a one inch diameter thread so these are really handy for converting the standard 9x50 finder scopes from such companies as uh, Skywatcher, Celestron, Orion and that is great because it means you can use your finder scope as a guide scope as well. Uh, next along we have this, again I, I personally use this. This is a very good red dot finder by Barda. Barda I find pretty much don't make any bad products I've not come across one and this is no exception you get red dot finders on a lot of entry telescopes but they don't tend to be that great they're just made to a price to keep the overall cost of that telescope package down but this for quite still quite a modest outlay of 35 pounds is it's bigger and it's your eye position is a lot less critical with the cheaper ones that come with t uh, budget telescopes you, you really do struggle to see the red dots sometimes unless your eyes exactly at the right angle so the viewing angle on this one is much nicer and I found with the array of bases it comes with you can pretty much attach it to anything so really good finder upgrade I think and very lightweight still now next we have a Barlow lens and whether you're into visual astronomy or or imaging I, I think this is a very handy tool to have. Now from a visual point of view this is going to effectively double the focal length of your telescope so if you use this with an eyepiece it's going to give you double the magnification the eyepiece would normally give you so if you put a 10mm eyepiece in this Barlow lens and put it into your telescope it's going to act like a 5mm lens so that's that's really good because it effectively doubles your eyepiece magnifications in one fell swoop by just adding a Barlow lens to your collection but also this particular one has a T-thread on it which means you can use a T-ring to connect it to a DSLR um, to uh, both connect your camera to your telescope but also to magnify the image and also a Barlow lens has the effect of bringing the focal point of the telescope further out so if you've got a telescope that doesn't reach focus with a DSLR camera which quite a few don't adding a Barlow lens can help bring that focus point out and help you achieve focus but adding to that there's a few more things that this does like you can remove this bit here the Barlow lens element and just use this as just a straightforward T adapter to connect a T ring and a DSLR and mirrorless camera to your telescope or even an astronomy camera because it is a standard T thread uh, or you can attach the Barlow element to the bottom of a camera 
or eyepiece to alter the magnification of that. So it's a very versatile thing to have for just £25. I've got a Barlow lens, but it's a different Barlow lens. But if I add £25 to spend on a Barlow, this would be the one. If I had £30 to spend on a Barlow, this would be the one I'd get. Now, everyone should have, except for people that purely image with a Newtonian telescope perhaps, everyone else should have some kind of cleaning fluid and cleaning equipment for their optics. And I can't think of a better product for doing that than Barda Optical Wonder Fluid. Now, the only thing you can't do clean with this is Newtonian mirrors because the coatings are too soft. And it says here, no, Barda Optical Wonder Fluid is prim primarily for lens cleaning. It's not suitable for cleaning Newtonians. But I do have a video about how to clean a Newtonian mirror. So I'll put that at the end of this video. If you stick to the end or skip to the end, I'll link it at the end. Now, but this really great for if you've got eyepieces and as soon as you use an eyepiece, you're getting grease off your eyelashes on the eye lens. Now, eyepieces have quite hard coatings on for this reason that they do need cleaning quite regularly. But this fluid and everything is also suitable for cleaning objective lenses for refractors, for example or corrector plates on Smith Casa grains. Applying the Wonder Fluid to the cloth rather than directly to the optics of the telescope so you don't drench it and get kind of fluid ingress. But yeah, I think everyone should have some kind of cleaning, cleaning equipment for their optics. Next up we have a polarizing lunar filter, moon filter. And the reason I'd pick this over a standard moon filter is because you can twist the two elements and it, it varies the amount of light coming through, which means it's, it's, you can tune it to your, your eye, how bright and contrasty you want the image to be, but also you can use it with different telescopes with different apertures and you don't need to get separate moon filters that filter out different amounts of light. This is suitable for any telescope because you can adjust the amount of light that's coming through. And there's a trick to this as well, like if you're using a telescope that uses a star diagonal, you can pop off of the uh, polarizing moon filter onto the diagonal and then the other half onto the bottom of an eyepiece. And then you can simply control the brightness by twisting the eyepiece in the diagonal. So that's a, that's a neat trick to do with these. It's also suitable for the different phases of the moon because obviously the moon's much brighter when it's a full moon so you'd probably want to twist it round and make it darker when it's a full moon and have it less, have more light coming through when it's a, a sliver of a moon like a new moon for example. So very versatile moon filter, a polarizing moon filter. So the, ne the next one is a Cheshire collimating eyepiece and this is really necessary for anyone that's got a telescope like a Newtonian that requires the mirrors aligning periodically to get the best performance. It was only recently that I had a question why someone couldn't get a sharp image with their eyepiece and I I mentioned when when did you last collimate the telescope and, and they replied saying oh not for ages and then I used uh, like a, a cheap laser and the thing is with cheap lasers they can just be out of collimation because they're effectively a laser pointer and a tube with three adjustment screws. So I've also got a video how to collimate a laser collimator but it is a little bit of a faff so I do feel that if you're just going to get one tool either a collimation cap or slightly better something like this Cheshire collimator here which is a good quality one for £37 would be a good investment if you're using like a Newtonian telescope or a Ritchie Correction, something like that. So yeah, that's that one. So moving on. Now we're living in very much camera wise, smartphones are, are really taking over and the comp the comp can't say the word, the computational side of phones now is getting incredible they're becoming quite useful for astrophotography so I'm thinking of getting one of these I've not got one yet but it's on my list of things to get and uh, this is slightly over the 50 pounds but they do a more affordable one this one's 
suitable for 1.25 inch eyepieces this one has got more adjustment and you can use that on larger 2 inch eyepieces as well and this is the one that gets all the reviews so I thought it was worth including even though it's £5 over my stated limit in the title now this enables you to attach your smartphone and take pictures whether you're using a telescope like so or a spotting scope or even like binoculars I mean I can't wait to give that a go when I've got one of these and um, there's lots of software now for taking astrophotos and advanced photography features built into smartphones now and I think things are only going to get better in that respect I do need to do more of that kind of thing on my channel so yeah that would be another recommendation not based on experience but based on like the reviews as you can see there it's got five star reviews and the way things are going with smartphones now when you get your telescope it's probably got one finder shoe so you can either attach a finder scope or a guide scope but you can't attach a finder scope and a guide scope and a red dot finder unless you've got one of these which is a multi finder adapter and just simply allows you to enable three different finder scopes or two finder scopes and a guider to be fitted to your telescope so this is another thing that I don't have but I've been meaning to get one because it just seems like a really kind of useful thing to have in the old astronomy ars arsenal uh, so yeah pretty not much more to say about that really it just converts one finder shoe into three enables you to attach three times as many uh, think optical aids to help you find your way around the sky or help with guiding so I think that's good now I've made a homemade one of these and I really liked it but effectively this is a cap that you put desiccant in and it keeps your inside of your telescope damp free so if you're storing your telescope in like a damp shed or a garage something like that or you, you you're from a fairly damp environment this may be and you've got an expensive telescope it might be worth the 35 pound outlay you get 10 sachets of moisture absorbing desiccant and it fits securely in both si both sizes of focus so the typical one 1.25 and 2 inch focuses so it could potentially prevent mold from forming on the inside of your optics if you uh, store your your telescope somewhere damp so I thought that was worth mentioning also now a little bit DIY -y, but this can be great because I mean it's cheap to buy it's flocking material when you get a telescope it's not jet black inside they tend to have kind of a dark grey paint sprayed on the inside but if you compare that dark grey paint to a flocking material which is three-dimensional close-up so it really traps any stray light that's bouncing around your telescope so you can put this on the inside of your telescope tube or opposite the focuser at least or inside the dew shield and it just helps soak up any of that stray light and potentially increases the contrast of your telescope improving your telescope so for a roll that's one meter long by 45 centimeters at 750 that's worth doing on a, a rainy weekend I think if you want to improve your telescope now I bought some of this last year for the partial solar eclipse I made a solar filter for my camcorder and I filmed the partial solar eclipse which is now I've got a screen grab of that which I use as my thumbnail so if you look at my thumbnail for my channel that's using this Barda solar film and I just think it's an affordable way to get into solar imaging and observing with the caveat that you've got to really follow the instructions of how to make a filter from this solar film and how to properly use it because you are potentially risking your eyesight if you get it wrong so always be careful with anything to do with solar observing <laughs> especially when you're making your own filter but if you're careful enough it's absolutely fine it's just all about being vigilant and careful don't risk your eyesight if you put your filter your homemade filter from this Barda solar film on your telescope don't just jump right into putting your eye up against the eyepiece maybe wave your hand in front of it to make sure it's not any heat coming out there if you get stigmata of the palm you know that <laughs> you know that something's gone wrong so never put your eye in front of the eyepiece first when 
you're observing with solar film sacrifice the palm of your hand or a bit of paper even that makes more sense doesn't it you get what i'm saying don't you so next up we have basically some kind of light pollution filter because we're all faced with light pollution a uhc filter is a really good one i think because it's a light pollution and sky glow filter but it's also very transparent to the wavelengths of light coming from the objects we want to see like nebulae for example so really great if we, most of us live under some kind of light pollution so this is a pretty decent filter for 38 quid for the smaller one two inch one is 61 pounds but if we're just talking about the smaller 1.25 inch standard size filter we're in our budget so i included that one if you're using an aluminium tripod you'll know that it's great because they make your whole setup really light having an aluminium tripod for your telescope but vibrations can be a big issue like if you're adjusting the focuser the eyepiece the object will wobble around and it will take several seconds to die down even longer sometimes and I was skeptical about this when I got some but they do make a difference it really is a good compromise between getting a very heavy steel tripod and just having an aluminium tripod a good compromise would be to have an aluminium tripod and these anti-vibration pads because you're getting the lightweight aluminium tripod and you're getting somewhere towards the stability of the steel tripod by having the dampening of these vibration pads so if I was buying a rig with an aluminium tripod I'd probably chuck some of these in for 29 quid now this one it's not so much a gadget it's an optical device in its own right but it really is worth if you've not got a pair of binoculars and you're doing astronomy just get a, just get a pair because they're just so great if you're imaging and you're all set up and you're running you're running your subs off you go out and you, you look up at the sky and just having a pair of binoculars just enhances that experience basically so really great and these ones i mean I do probably want something like a, a 10 by 50 for a bit more light grass, but you just under 50 pound. I think these are probably a good shout, really. The 8 times 40 mil objective for 39 pounds because they've been reduced. It's the price of a small gadget. Hello, Jamie Clarkson. What are you doing? Some kind of virus thing there. So yeah, £39 and you've got something to do while you're rolling your subs off or if you're a visual observer and you want a much wider view than your telescope's giving, you can just have a quick peek while you're out, out there at night. So definitely worth having a pair of binoculars if you've not got one. But that's pretty much it really. They're all gadgets that are useful in astronomy, I feel, for under £50 or give or take £50, $50, 50 euros. Hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you've not done so already. It really helps to grow the channel. And special thank you to my channel members, Dan the Man, Four Grapples and Ziggy Friends. And until next time, take care and remember to tell those clouds to sod off.